Hey, welcome to Easy Drone. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to go around setting Betaflight up on a brand new drone build. This hasn't been touched before, I just finished building it, so let's set it up. All you're going to need is your controller that's already bound to your receiver in your drone. You're going to need a pair of FPV goggles, a computer, uh, the cord to connect to your drone, and a battery. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug my drone in, and I'm going to get some new firmware, the latest firmware for this board. So I'm going to connect it, and I'm going to go into the CLI, and I'm going to type version. Uh, it shows me that my board is a uh, free F4 OSD, so I can disconnect and go into my firmware flasher, and I can type in F, get me to the F section, and find free F4 OSD, and I will pick the latest Betaflight version, which is currently 4.1.1. Click full chip erase and hit load firmware from online. This will download it, and now I can just hit flash firmware. It'll take a couple seconds, it'll put my board in DFU automatically. If you're having trouble putting your board in DFU mode, there's actually a little button you can click on your board, and if you hold that in when you're plugging in your board, it will uh, turn it to DFU mode automatically. So all my content just got erased, and the drone is being flashed with the newest firmware right now. So this will take a hot second, it'll take about 20 to 30 seconds, and then we'll be ready to set up programming. So as you can see, we just got done with the programming, so let's hit connect. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure my drone is on a nice level surface, it's not moving at all, and I'm going to hit Calibrate Accelerometer. The next step is going to be setting up your smart audio and your receiver. So I hooked up my receiver to UART1, and you can tell actually by going to your flight controller, I wired my receiver to the S bus, and S bus is just always on RX1. So that's UART1. And then I have smart audio for my VTX actually. And if you look, it's on TX3 right here. All this is my video pad, these four pads. And I use TX3 for that. So I'm going to set up UART3. I'm just going to go to sensor uh, peripherals and hit TBS smart audio. I'm going to hit save and reboot. And it will reboot. I'm just going to turn on auto connect so I won't have to hit connect every time and we're done with the port section. The next step is configuration. Uh, all my drones I just set it to DSHOT 600, it's good enough. 5.5 is when you hit your arm switch that's what percentage your motors are going to be spinning at when you're just no throttle and your uh, drone is armed. So 5.5 is good enough. Um, if you want to be able to use hurdle mode you're gonna have to change the arming, maximum arm angle from 25 to 180. You don't have to worry about any of this camera degree stuff. I like to give my craft a name. I'm gonna call this the Easy Drone Freestyle. And then my receiver is the XM Plus. It's already set to S Bus so I don't need to change that at all. Down in these other features you need to make sure your air mode, your on screen display is on and then just any other defaults for the board just leave them as is. So we're going to hit save and reboot for this section. So next we're going to make sure that the board is actually oriented correctly on the drone. So if I make the drone face away from me and I tip it up, yep, everything looks to be working just perfect. If I tip it left to right I can see the drone moves left to right, if I spin it so if your drone would be to move a wrong way, let's say if I was tipping it up and it was uh, moving its nose down, I could go into my configuration and I can actually just fix that really easily without having to go in there and flip my flight controller around. I just uh, hit, I just type in 180 to the odd degrees and I'd hit save and reboot. But I don't have that issue, so I'm not going to need to do this. So your power and battery section, you're not going to need to touch this. Um, it has your minimum cell voltage be to 3.3 and your warning cell voltage so once your battery gets to uh, 3.5 it'll start blinking at you. Now you don't need to touch this but for beginners I'd recommend setting your warning cell voltage to 3.7 so when you hit that it'll start blinking and it'll give you a reminder to land. I find that all of my quads fly absolutely great on Betaflight defaults. Now if you're setting up a larger quad like a 7 inch you're going to need to PID tune your drone that's a little more in depth so we're not going to go over it in this video. Um, the nice thing about this section is it does let you change your rates, so if you want a little bit faster or slower movements in your quad when you move your sticks, you can change that here. And also if you want to set up a curve on your throttle, so if you knew you are going to be flying a lot at half throttle and you wanted to uh, have a little bit more control in that area, you could set up a bit of a curve here so that the more you moved your stick, like if you moved it from 40 to 60%, your throttle would only go up by 10%. However. 
I like keeping that just default. I find that the stock rates are pretty good for me as well. The next step is the receiver. So you're gonna go into your receiver tab and uh, I find it good to always plug in the drone so you can make sure that your receiver's powered. Some drones will power the receiver through the USB port, so it's not needed for every single drone, but I like to plug in my drone to make sure. You're gonna need to turn on your radio and sometimes it's not gonna work at all. You're gonna have your radio on, um, you're gonna have your receiver on, you know they're bound, you know that works, but you're not seeing anything in here. When you move your sticks, you should see these move. Sometimes your controller just needs to be a little far away from your drone. It can be too close. So I'm gonna move this back about five feet. Yeah, so if I'm moving my throttle right now, my roll is moving. If I'm moving uh, my pitch from side to side, I can see that's working. My uh, throttle is not working though, and my yaw is working. So we need to move around our roll and our throttle because those are on the wrong sticks. So I'm just going to leave my controller a little bit further away here and I'm going to type in T-A-E-R-1234 uh, and hit save and yup, all of my, uh, my throttles now where it's supposed to be. But if you take a look at it, you can see that they're not centering on uh, 1500. Your throttle, it's supposed to be a little lower than 1000. So actually this is where you can trim your drone just right out of the box. My roll is, uh, it's going to about... 503, so I'm gonna move that a little bit over. Yep, now it's centering on 500. And my yaw, yep, it's stopping it around uh, 1497, so I'm gonna give that quick bump over. All right, my receiver's working good. We can move on to modes, and you're gonna leave your controller connected for this section. So this is where you select um, what you want it, which switch to do. So you're gonna have to assign your switches on your radio. Uh, there will be a different video I'll link to in the description that shows you how to do that. And it's really easy. So you're going to want to pick which switch to arm your drone and just flip that switch. It will automatically detect which switch you're using and then when you flip the switch to uh, the spot that you want activated, you're just going to want to make sure that this red, the, this yellow bar is uh, over that little yellow dot. You can see that yellow dot that's moving. When that yellow dot is matched up with this yellow bar, that means my drone is going to be armed. Now, I like having angle on my drone, even though I never use it, it can be really nice if you lose video for a second and you need to make sure that your quad is going up, you can easily switch into angle. So I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna flip that switch again. It is going to be on aux three. And I'm going to set up, um, I'm going to set up, where is it? Flip over after crashing. If you crash your drone, this will allow you to select two of your motors just to spin backwards. Get your drone flipped over really easily. So I'm going to set that up, and I believe every drone pilot should have the flip over after crash, angle, and arm set up on their drone. Now, your drone is automatically in acro mode, so as long as you don't have that switch flips to put it into angle, you can see by that little, uh, little yellow dot right there, it's going to be in acro mode by default. It can be easier for some people to start out in angle, so you might want to consider putting that just as your default uh, position. I like starting out in acro though, so I'm going to leave that right here. Now that we've got our switches set up, I'm going to hit save and we can turn our controller off. This next step, we're going to be testing our motor. So leave your drone plugged in for this step. I'm going to strap my battery down. When you're testing your motors, it is really, really careful. Anytime you're plugged into beta flight or doing anything with the drone inside, it's crucial that your props are off. Um, Betaflight actually has you understand the risks. It has a little disclaimer here. So we're going to um, make sure all our motors spin the right direction first. So I'm going to use this master switch and I'm going to spin them all up really slowly. So uh, there's this nice little diagram up here showing you which way they should spin. My number one motor should be spinning. Okay, that's spinning the right way. And you can just hold your finger by the side of each motor to make sure it's spinning the right way. So my motor 4 is spinning the wrong way, my motor 3 is spinning the right way. So since my motor 4 is spinning the wrong way, I'll have to switch that. Um, let's just check that all of our motors are in the right position. My number 1 motor is at the right spot, my number 2 motor is at the right spot, and 3 is at the right spot. So all I need to do, my motor 4 was spinning the wrong direction, so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect and we're going to close beta flight. I go over to Plaheli, I'm going to hit connect, and I'm going to hit read setup. Now that I've, uh, now I can see all my ESCs, I'm just going to down, go down to ESC4, I'm going to hit reverse, and I'm going to hit right setup. This will just basically reverse the motor on spot 4. So we can see that uh, reading setup is finished, 
And so now we can hit disconnect. We can close out of Plaheli again. When we go back into beta flight and hit connect, we can go to the motors tab and we can uh, spin up that motor four again and it should be spinning the right way. Yep, that's spinning the right way, so we're all set with our motors. Now, the drone is fully set up except for the OSD. If I was connect to connect props right now, I would hit my arm switch and I would be able to give it a little bit of throttle and that drone would lift off in the air. So I'm gonna go up into my OSD now. And what the OSD is, is um, it just shows you anything you want it to. So I'm gonna hook up my goggles here. Now Noah's OSD is the same. So you're going to want to have your goggles open so you can see where exactly on the screen you're moving stuff to. So I'm gonna hit auto search here so I can find my right channel. And it looks like I am on A8. So I'm going to want to select my RSSI. Now your RSSI is signal strength. You always want to have this. So I'm going to put it on the left of my screen. I like to keep the warnings up. So I'm going to actually lower those to the very bottom of my screen. I'm taking a look in my actual FPV goggles to see where exactly on the screen is going. And I like having my craft name up as well. Let's find that. If you have more than one drone, this can be really nice. It'll just give you a really easy reminder. And I probably have that name a little longer than it should be, but that's okay. Now your timer one. Your timer one is um, the total time your drone's been powered on. So you don't need that. It's a lot more helpful to have timer two, the total time it's been armed. So the total time you've been flying. Um, for most drones, you'll get between two to eight minutes, depending on how hard you fly it. Once you've been flying for a while, you know about how long your battery is going to last. So I'd recommend having this up. You're going to use it eventually. For new pilots, the most important thing to keep an eye on is your average cell voltage. Now, you don't want to fly a drone below 3.5 volts. I actually land all of my batteries at 3.7. This will let them last the very longest. If you go lower than 3.5 volts on a drone, it can actually damage the cell. So you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on this as well as your signal strength. Your signal strength will make sure you don't fail safe. If you fly too far away, the drone disconnects. And your uh, average cell voltage will make sure you don't fly your battery too low. You can set up your current draw too if you like seeing how much power you're taking out of the battery. I'm gonna put that over here. Uh, some people prefer using main battery voltage to see the combined voltage of, let's say they have a four cell battery, it would be 16.8 volts. Um, um, I like using I like using my average cell voltage though. It uh, just takes the average of the cell voltage. I fly 4S and 6S a lot, so I don't have to, uh, I don't have to worry about different voltages. I can take a look at this and just see if it hits 3.7, then it's time for me to land. Another thing that can be nice is to put your milliamp hours drawn. Now this is usually wrong, and you're, if you have a 1300 milliamp hour battery, it's ne you're never actually going to get 1300 milliamp hours out of it. It's going to be around a around thousand, but um, after you fly your first battery and um, you can see that the voltage has went down to 3.5 or 3.7, wherever you're comfortable stopping at, you can look at how many milliamp hours you've drawn. And then the next time you're flying, uh, you can just take a look at your uh, milliamp hours drawn to determine when you're going to land and you don't have to keep an eye on this because your voltage does fluctuate depending on how hard you're using the drone, how fast you're flying. Now down here, um, we can see, we can change some of the settings that it will show us actually we're done flying. So we can see how much time our drone is armed for. The max speed doesn't work if you have a GPS. Uh, we can see how low your battery got to and what's it at currently with this end battery. So I'd always recommend having that on. And then we can see how low your signal actually got. So if you flew a little further and you wanted to see how, uh, how low your signal quality actually got, you can look at your RSSI and it will show you the max current and used milliamp hours right out of the box. So make sure to hit save on this. The warnings, it'll pop up. This is the warnings. If you're in crash flip mode, so it's that turtle mode I was talking about, it'll flash on your screen, it'll tell you. If your battery's critical, if your battery gets below um, 3.3 volts, which we saw in this power and battery section, if it hits the minimum cell voltage, it's going to flash really fast. If it hits just the 3.7, which is what we set it to, it's going to uh, flash on this warning section. It's gonna flash a little bit more slowly. So you can set up your warnings here to be whatever you want them to. I'd recommend just keeping them all on. It works really well. For a little brief overview of everything we did, we selected what port our uh, VTX Smart Audio was on, so you can change your VTX settings from your goggles and your receiver was on. We went into our configuration. We made sure that um, the drone flight controller was in the right position. 
we changed our ESC motor protocol to DSHOT 600 and are arming to 180. You're going to have to change your receiver in here too. If you're using Crossfire, you're going to need to change it to Crossfire. I was already using SBUS though, so I didn't need to change anything. In our receiver, we made sure that our throttle, our roll, our pitch, and our yaw were all on the right channels. And in our modes tab, we were actually able to set up our arming and our flight modes, whether it was angle or acro. And once we went into our motor section, we were able to make sure that all our motors are actually in the correct order and that they were all spinning the right way. If your motors aren't in the right order, I have a post on how to fix that. I'll link it in the description below. The final step is we just went through was our OSD. We uh, set up everything we wanted to see on our screen. So now all that's left to do is a test hover. So I got my drone plugged in and I got my controller bound. We're gonna do a little test hover inside. Never do this. Please always make sure to do your test hovers outside where if your drone flips out, goes crazy, it's not going to hurt anything. You can always stand a safe distance away. So I'm gonna go into the other room and I'm gonna test hover this. Setting up a drone in beta flight, um, once you've done it a couple times, it's really easy. There's actually not that many steps to it. It's not that hard, it's pretty quick to set up, and the beta flight defaults are great. Um, make sure to subscribe and like this video if it helped you out, and happy flying.